Outside of the Tesla supercharger network, Electrify America is the largest DC fast charging network in North America. And it's begun to do something it's never done before. The effects of which could have a major impact on its future success. Now you'd have to be following the industry really closely to know what I'm talking about here because the network hasn't announced anything about what it's doing. You'd have to be following the charging geeks on X or even on YouTube. There's been a couple of short videos saying, hey, look what Electrify America is doing. They've never done this before. So I reached out to the network to try to get some information on it. Now, initially, they weren't really willing to talk much about it and just confirmed, hey, yeah, we're doing something, but we're not really ready to announce anything yet. But after pressing them, they've agreed to tell me what's going on and actually give me access to a landing page on the Electrify America site that's not public yet. I assume it will be shortly after I make this video, but as of right now, it's not a public facing page yet, but you're gonna get to see it here on State of Charge, so let's get into it. All right, so what's been causing a stir lately is people have noticed at the Florida Mall in Orlando, that's an Electrify America site that has been operating there for a while, but it's been down for a while for upgrades. They've noticed that the new chargers that have been installed there, they're not operational yet, but they've already been installed, are Alpatronic HYC 400 chargers with four cables on each charger. And uh, this is newsworthy because Electrify America has never gone out and gotten an, let's say, off the shelf charger. They've always designed or co-engineered their chargers in house. And there's a reason for that. And um, I wanna go back in history a little bit just to explain the whole uh, course of action that led to Electrify America making their own equipment rather than going and getting something off the shelf like it appears they have now. And that's because back in 2015, actually it was September of 2015, when the Dieselgate scandal came about and Volkswagen was caught cheating on their diesel emissions, they were ordered by the US government to uh, invest $2 billion in DC fast charging and, and uh, infrastructure and education, a bunch of things they had to do. That happened, uh, I think it was in 2016. So we were looking nine years ago. Electrify America was born and uh, they were ordered to build out this DC fast charging network. They didn't uh, just do it on their own like Tesla has or uh, IANA now. They had to do it. So they put a team together. They actually assembled a, a very good, competent team. I knew many of the engineers and uh, executives in the company. Uh, you know, they did this fully with the intention of doing as good as they could. It wasn't really a, a half-baked job, in my opinion, and I've had the opportunity to talk to the engineers and executives in the company. So go back to 2016. Uh, they decided they were going to install high-speed chargers. Now, they weren't ordered to do that. They could have went and bought off-the-shelf charging equipment. There was charging equipment available. There was many companies out there making uh, CCS DC fast chargers, uh, plenty of vendors, because there was other networks out there like EVgo, for instance, that was servicing electric vehicles. ChargePoint had DC fast chargers. Tritium at the time was doing DC fast chargers. There was a bunch of companies, but they were all making 50 kilowatt DC fast chargers. Electrify America could have simply said, you know, give us 10,000 of those over the next 10 years and we'll call it a day. They were not legally obligated to install high speed DC fast charging, but the company decided to do that. And I specifically talked to the then CEO Giovanni Palazzo about this and about the decision. And he told me that, you know, he knew that this was gonna mean trouble for them because there were no 350 or 150 kilowatt DC fast chargers. They didn't exist. Even Tesla superchargers couldn't deliver that kind of power back in 2016. When Tesla superchargers started back in 2012, they only had three or four sites. They really started ramping up, I think in 2013 and 2014 with a bunch of locations. Their superchargers could only deliver 90 kilowatts. It was still better than the 50 that the rest of the industry was, was taking in, but it was only 90 kilowatts. They didn't up till to 120 kilowatts 
until 2015 with their V2 superchargers, but it was still only 120 kilowatts. And here's Electrify America saying, we're gonna put out a network of 150 to 350 kilowatt DC fast chargers, and that's what we're gonna build out. Problem was they didn't exist. So they had to co-engineer them. They picked four different vendors, ABB, BTC Power, FSEC, and SK Signet to co-engineer and make these chargers. And I asked them, why would you want to work with four different companies, uh, you know, different software, different hardware even, with all these different companies? It's going to be a nightmare. And the answer was, we have no choice. None of these companies can make the amount of chargers that we need in the amount of time that we're ordered to install them in the consent decree of the Volkswagen scandal. So we have to work with multiple vendors, knowing that there were gonna be problems. And there were a lot of problems. A lot of the problems uh, resulted from software glitches and just failed hardware. Electrify America then, when they came out with their second generation of chargers in 2022, they narrowed it down to two vendors, SK Signet and BTC Power. They changed their charger to having one cable instead of two cables. There used to be two cables, one on each end of the charger, but only one of them could be used at this time. Now they provided a longer cable so it could reach anywhere in the charging stall. Only one cable, all the chargers were 350 kilowatts, and they power shared with a second unit. So when you go to an Electrify America site with the new 350 kilowatt DC fast chargers, they're grouped in twos and each two stations share power. If you're there by yourself, you get the full power, but if you're uh, parked next to another vehicle that's charging on the pair that you're paired with, it will split power. Okay, so that kind of brings us up to where we are today. This video was sponsored by Cumerit. North America's premier installer of electric vehicle charging equipment. After I've helped you decide which electric vehicle charger you're going to buy, follow the link in the description of my videos and have Qmerit install it. And if you follow that link, Qmerit will waive the $150 installation deposit. But in order to have the deposit waived, you must follow the link in the description of my videos. So I mentioned that people are posting about the Florida Mall in Orlando, which is under construction. Thing is, that's not the only site. Electro America has another site under construction installing the same chargers, and that's in Waterford Commons in Waterford, Connecticut. And this pilot program isn't necessarily about Electrify America trying equipment from other manufacturers. It's about Electrify America introducing NAX connectors to its network. Now, if you remember, I said that the second generation Electrify America chargers now only has one cable tethered to it with a longer cable so it could reach all the different areas of a car pulling in. Their first generation chargers had two cables, one on each side, so it could reach the vehicle's charge point depending on which side of the vehicle your charge port was on. With second generation, they did away with that second cable. Now they need another cable for their chargers because we have this transition to NAX. And I suppose they could install every other station, a NAX, a CCS, a NAX CCS, but that's not really a good long-term plan. You want every station to be able to serve every electric vehicle without having to use an adapter. If they would have known the industry was gonna to transition to a NAX back in, I guess, 2021, when they were engineering their new second generation chargers, they probably would have kept the second cable on it so they could just swap a cable out at the time, but they didn't. They didn't foresee that the industry was gonna transition and it has one cable. So now what do you do? Go back and engineer V3 and uh, you know go to your vendors and say, we have to, we have to do this all over again. Why do that when there is already proven off-the-shelf equipment out there that you can buy from multiple vendors? Remember, back in 2015, that just wasn't available. Nobody was making 350 kilowatt DC fast chargers, not even Tesla, but now they are. So if I'm Electrify America, I'm gonna say, you know, why, why, why should we go back to the drawing board and work with BTC Power and say, you know, hey, um, we need, we need to, to add a cable to the chargers we have. Just 
try out ones that are on the market. Hey, you might even like them better. <laughs> so they made a deal with Alpatronic. They're using the HYC 400, which are 400 kilowatt DC fast chargers that can have up to four cables on them. Now we've seen these units with two cables on like the IANA network, uh, the uh, Mercedes network, but they could always have had four cables if they wanted to. Now they can only charge two cars at once on the Electrify America network. Uh, Alpatronic could actually design them to charge four cars at once, but the way the stalls are, you're gonna situate one between two stalls. Uh, Electrify America is gonna, going to go with uh, two charging uh, units, even though they have four connectors, but that's because each side will have a NACS and a CCS, a NACS and a CCS. So no matter which side you pull on, no matter which ve vehicle you have, whatever your charge port's equipped with, you'll be able to use that uh, charge port. So let's um, break for a second and see what the Electrify America website says about this program. We're always looking for ways to learn and innovate. And these pilot stations allow us to test a new station layout with both CCS and NACS connectors and gather information from those who try them out. These chargers can also charge two vehicles at the same time on one charger, allowing us to simultaneously power two EV journeys. If you stop by, make sure to let us know your thoughts. So this pilot program isn't really about trying new equipment as much as I think a lot of people assume that when they saw that the Alpatronics were in use. It's more about the fact that Electrify America needed to find a charger that could charge both NAX equipped vehicles and CCS1 equipped vehicles. And it makes all the sense in the world for them to just go to an existing vendor rather than try to engineer their third generation of chargers. I'm sure if they would have known that this was coming, this transition back in 2020, 2021, when they were engineering their next generation chargers, they would have put two cables on them. It would have cost them a lot less. They could just swap them out now and they have their, their chargers with uh, both cables on them. But since they didn't, uh, I assume this is gonna be the path of least resistance. And it might even work out to be much better for them in the long run. The Alpatronic units have a great reputation of being highly reliable. There's thousands of them deployed in the world, not so many in the US yet. IANA has chosen them to be the chargers that they're gonna be using, at least now in the beginning. They left the door open for in the future, we'll see we, you know, if we um, wanna have another vendor, we may at some point in the future, but I would imagine if everything goes good with the Alpatronic HYC 400s, they'd have no reason to go with uh, another vendor. And uh, Alpatronic is getting a, a strong foothold here in North America after having one in Europe, and uh, as I said, they seem to be highly reliable chargers. They're higher powered. They can charge, uh, at least on the Electrify America network, two vehicles simultaneously. They'll, they'll split power, uh, but there are 600 amps uh, on each uh, port. So it's not like it's just going to cut it to 200 kilowatts. It depends on what uh, each uh, electric vehicle is calling for, but uh, I think it's going to be rare that either side won't be able to deliver the maximum power that a vehicle is calling for. I mean, of course, if two Porsche Taycans pulled up at the same time at 5% state of charge, it's not gonna be able to give each side 300 kilowatts like it'll be calling for, but that doesn't happen that often. And if it does, it's only gonna be for a very short period of time, you know, five or 10 minutes of the charging session and the rest, both sides will be delivering the full amount of power that the vehicles are calling for. So um, that's the update that I wanted to share. Um, I assume that Electrify America is going to put this uh, landing page up soon. It's probably going to go up when I have the uh, video go up. But for now, you got to see it and hear about this here first. That's what this is about. It's a pilot program about having NACS connectors available on the network, more so than it's a program trying out equipment from new vendors. I think that was just the fact that uh, this was the easiest way to do it for Electrify America, and why not? Why go through the hassle of engineering new equipment? Listen, if this is your first time here at State of Charge, please hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming electric vehicle news and reviews. And as always, thanks for watching.